Hey guys, in today's video I want to show you physically and conceptually how I deal with the oil system in my turbocharged E36. Enjoy. So I thought it'd be a better idea to explain everything inside now that there's better lighting and it's also pretty cloudy outside so the lighting's pretty poor in the garage anyways. So I wanted to come up with a couple recommendations and the advice that I was given for my lubrication system for the turbocharger uh, and I laid it all out on this whiteboard right here. Hopefully after this video you guys will have a better understanding of how lubrication works for turbochargers, what's necessary, what's not necessary, uh, the key things that you guys need to remember, and um, basic important bullet points to prevent you guys from over lubricating the turbocharger, flooding it, or anything like that. So one of the first things you want to consider when uh, adding an oil lubrication system to your turbo is figuring out what the stock system looks like, basically understanding how the external oil lines work on the stock motor. So the next point I want to make is that you got to find out which oil filter housing model you have for your E36. What I mean by that is that every single E36, if it's a Euro spec M3 versus a US spec or a non-Venos or a Venos motor, those oil filter housings might not be the same. And then based on that oil filter housing, you have a couple different options to choose from when you actually want to tap into the lubrication system, as I'll explain uh, in a little bit. My third point is that you want to plan out the aftermarket lubrication system around your turbo location. So what I mean by that is that you want to be able to figure out where your turbo is going to sit first. Then you can figure out how long of oil lines you're going to need to tap from the oil filter housing or wherever you choose from. And this last one right here is just the stock oil pressure is different between idle and max. And that makes sense because as you rev higher, of course the PSI from the actual oil pump is going to increase. I think for BMWs it's about 30 and then to 60 PSI total. The first option I considered was a replacement for the stock oil filter housing cap. Um, and basically this modified aftermarket cap will splice the existing oil pressure line so that I can go through an oil cooler. And then secondly, it gives you secondary um, ports in order to splice off to either an oil gauge or to the turbo. So basically I didn't choose this option because if there were any leaks inside the actual oil cap itself, you might not get sufficient oil pressure to feed the turbocharger. Um, that's why I moved on to the second option. Basically at the top and the bottom of the oil feed line for the Venus itself, there's this kind of stock bolt that has like a couple holes in it that allows for the pressure to be distributed into the line from the actual uh, oil filter housing. So you can buy a bolt that has an adaptive fitting for an additional oil line from there. So in my opinion, this bolt with the modified flange for an oil feed as an AN fitting is the most reliable source of oil for the turbocharger. So Euro spec M3s will benefit from this third option right here because you can actually have a little fitting that fits perfectly I think on the side of the oil housing itself. The last point of course is just a custom fab area so you basically have to isolate a section inside the oil housing that you know has oil pressure going through it and just tap directly to there and that also works. So adding on to the fittings for the turbocharger itself, fittings matter for the turbocharger. Basically a turbocharger can be easily flooded if there's too much oil going into it so just splicing a line into the turbo from any sort of oil source is not enough. You basically have to find the correct restrictor fitting for the turbocharger. So look up the specs, look up the size restrictor that you need so that you can attach it to the turbo correctly and not have to worry about too much oil pressure going into the turbocharger. A tip of a ballpoint pen should not be able to fit all the way through this fitting. If it does, it might be too much and you might flood the turbo that way. If it's small like this and you screw on, so if you screw on a hose with a small enough fitting, it will give just enough oil pressure for the turbocharger and you'll have a happy turbo. So one of the most common questions I get is about the oil drain. So basic rules that I followed was that the turbo must rest at a location above the drain fitting for adequate gravity draining. By gravity draining, I mean that the height of the turbo itself versus the actual fitting below will actually allow for the turbo to just naturally fall back into the drain location. The drain fitting must also be above the level of oil in the pan um, or other tapped areas in the motor because if the drain fitting is underneath the level of oil, um, the turbo might have a hard time of draining that oil and it might actually get clogged in that drain line and you don't want that to happen. Um, the last point is you can also use a secondary oil pump. Basically if the turbo is in a too low of a section where you don't think that the oil will drain properly, you can install a secondary pump which is again it's going to cause a lot more troubles because you'll need more fabrication and then you got to splice into a power source but that could also work. But my setup, 
My setup is fairly simple. I simply have the turbo as a top mount setup here, drains on the bottom, and I literally have it to a bung that's welded on the side of the motor. And basically you can see it's above the oil level, so it's at the highest point in the oil pan possible. And you can see that the oil pan drain is right below. So you can kind of see like the spatial difference between the two points. So now that I've shown you everything that's on this board right here, I can show you how my setup looks like in person. So now that we're in my garage, the lubrication system for my turbocharger is fairly simple. So besides my turbo, I also want to mention this oil cap that right here. Uh, it's the Ireland Engineering uh, oil adapter cap. Basically it replaces the stock cap on top of the oil filter and allows the oil system to be spliced out to an oil cooler and has two additional ports that you can feed to the turbo, but I blocked the second one and only used one for an oil pressure gauge. So from the bottom of the Vanos, there's a tap bolt similar to the top bolt right here. That's at the bottom of the Vanos supply oil line. And then basically that has a 6AN fitting that goes to this line right here. And this line goes to the top of my turbo right there. Then as for the drain, it's hard to see, but at the bottom of the turbo there is a 10AN fitting with a thick oil line. And basically that goes to my oil pan. And I'll show you guys on this motor. So on this motor, this is the typical oil drain for when you do oil changes. And basically I have a 10 AN aluminum fitting that's welded approximately right there for my drain for the turbo. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick overview of my lubrication system. Um, I hope that this was helpful in determining what setup is best for you guys in order to figure out how to feed and drain the turbo itself with oil. So in the next video, I really wanna just talk about the ECU platform type and the tuning options that you have based on a budget. So if you have a low budget, this is the setup that I would recommend um, because this is the setup that mainly I was following. Then I also want to talk about other setups that if I had a bigger budget, I would definitely consider doing, uh, such as like standalone ECUs and such like that. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.